50 minutes to explore a section of Hyrule, a little ways north of the Great Plateau, and the Sky Islands floating above. Plane, which you can ascend through. It was a really great fight, and I can imagine there are no end of different ways to defeat it. My second gameplay began in Hyrule Field, just north of Lake Colomo. I was able to record this session, though I'll have to cut the footage up, and have been provided additional footage from Nintendo to show alongside my own gameplay. Unlike the first session, where I was just told to mess around and get to grips with the new abilities, this time I had objectives. First was accessing this tower, one of the new Sheikah towers we've seen dotted across Hyrule in this game. This one isn't as friendly as you'd expect, however. It appears to have been overrun by monsters, who now guard it like it's their stronghold. After the tower, I was told that my next objectives were above the clouds, an area known as the South Hyrule Sky Archipelago, found in the central Hyrule sky. I had to find my way first to the red map pin, then over to the green, which means covering a considerable distance of empty sky. To complete these objectives, I had to make use of the new abilities I'd practiced on the Great Sky Island, both for combat and exploration. In Tears of the Kingdom, Link's powers are accessed through a wheel. Like Sheikah runes, you can access whatever ability you have currently selected by just pressing L, but to swap between them, you need to hold L down for a second, opening this menu. By moving the right stick to select an ability, then letting go of L, Link switches to it. You'll notice that there's a new ability here you haven't seen yet. I did get to play around with this, but I'm not allowed to show you what it does or mention it by name. I can say that it isn't available from near the start of the game, like Ultra Hand, Recall, Ascend and Fuse, instead it's obtained later on, and it streamlines the Ultra Hand building process to make things more convenient, especially in sections of the game where you need to build a lot. So let's break this gameplay up and talk about Link's new abilities. Ultra Hand is one of the most important of Link's new powers. It works a bit like a super-powered version of Magnesis. It can be used to manipulate the environment, but works on almost anything that isn't nailed down. You can grab and throw explosive barrels, control apparatus, and, of course, build.
build vehicles. The Ultrahand building system really is completely free. You can glue bits together in whatever way you want. You select objects with A, then can move them closer to or further away from Link with up and down on the D-pad, just like Magnesis. But you can rotate too, by holding the R button and using the D-pad. At first, this did feel a little bit tedious, but it did click after a while. By the end of the session, I had no problems at all rotating things quickly and accurately. Once an object is in the correct place, you can glue it by pressing A again. Building with Ultrahand doesn't just let Link piece together parts he finds lying around. He can also access them from his inventory, which now has a separate category for Zonai devices, and can drop them in front of him. You can also drop devices straight out of the Materials slider menu too, accessed by pressing up on the D-pad. In Tears of the Kingdom, all Zonai technology is powered by batteries. Most of the time, this is the energy cell Link has strapped to his hip which, it seems, can be upgraded throughout the game with more power. These battery meters appear whenever Zonai technology is active. Once depleted, the technology switches off, but the battery meter will recharge when not powering anything. You can also add additional batteries to Zonai machines, which will deplete before any of Link's energy cells do. Throughout my sessions, I obtained Zonai parts in different ways. Larger elements, like stone gliders or floating platforms, are just found around the world. But smaller gizmos, like fans, rockets, and additional batteries, are sourced from these pachinko-style machines, where, by depositing Zonai charges into the hopper, Link will receive a random assortment of Zonai parts to store in his inventory. These charges are dropped by constructs, so not only do they drop weapons and horns to fuse with, they drop an item which can be directly exchanged for vehicle parts, as well as be consumed to replenish Link's battery.